All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. This is Matt. And Jake here. Coming to you this week. This is week 24. And Jake, what's it called? Uh, this is Vayikra. And it means called. Called, right. Vayikra called, Matt. Yes. And they're looking for some Leviticus 1 uh, through 526. Well, I know where you can find it. Okay. So and uh, this uh, is kind of like rules and regulations. So here we go. So this is our uh, high-end, high-view Torah portion That's right. situation here. So we uh, hope to point you to the Word. And uh, so if there are things here you haven't looked up before, we encourage you to, to read the Word. Don't take our Word for it. Take His Word take for it. Take the Word for yeah. it. So in this, uh, you know, this particular scripture, He wants us to be in His presence. Uh, to do that, we've got to put some effort into it. And we need to desire to pursue him and follow his ways. Yeah, I think there's, so this is going to go into a bunch of different uh, sacrificial uh, commands and stuff like that. And so do you think there was a lot of effort that went into preparing and doing yes. offering these yes, things? There's a, there's a lot of work, a lot of physical work. It was hard, sweaty, bloody. It was tough work. Yeah. So... And, uh, and it was a commitment on everyone's part to, to remember what to do. And, um, and then, yeah. Just... That always strikes me as how, how much there would be to remember, mm -hmm. how much kind of responsibility was on there. Yeah, you almost uh, need like the way the quarterbacks have this sleeve that they wear on their <laughs> arm sometimes with all these play calls. And right. they're like, oh, okay, this happened. Okay, that's a sin offering. And I got to <laughs> do this. And I can use this and this. Okay, got it. <laughs> So they would have loved to have had that. Yeah. I'm sure that if they came back today, they would look at that and go, oh, that's genius. Why I didn't we that. do that? Yeah. Why didn't we write on some rocks, yeah. all that stuff? <laughs> wear it on our wrist. <laughs> so you hear through this section, you're going to, in the next few weeks, you through Leviticus, you hear us talk a lot about burning up our thoughts, um, burning up your heart, your emotion, transferring. And so... Um, and then also had transferring the sin, like sharing burdens. Um, in First Timothy five twenty two, talks about sharing one another's burdens. Um, so, Jake, you have any thoughts about that? Um, yeah, it's you know everyone's kind of involved in that in that uh, those offerings and stuff. I mean, the whole congregation, the whole church, the mm -hmm. whole assembly uh, is is involved in. You know, knowing what's what they would have to bring a an offering for, even because I mean the priest can't be everywhere at once, mm -hmm. uh, and it was kind of incumbent upon you once you realized certain things, like in the case of a sin offering. You know, once you realize, then it's up to you to bring bring an offering. Yeah, and that kind of thing. So everyone had to kind of be on the same page and help each other out with you know doing it the right way. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure. That, you know, people did ask, hey, what do you do here? You know, they had to, and which sure kind of priests got asked that a lot. Yeah, that kind of goes into, and I know that's this isn't really the topic for today, but um, but it's something we talk about a lot on this channel is the the whole idea of you know the law being they had to keep it, or they or you know brought about cursing, right? So. Did, so were they allowed to mess up? Sure. Yes, because everyone did mess up. Mm -hmm. Everyone does mess up, right? No one was sinless, so everyone did have, you know, stumble in this walk. But were they cursed for the stumbles? No, that's not the point, right? The, mm -hmm. the point is don't rebel. Yeah. So I yeah, think no, that's, that's important good. to throw in there, too. Oh, for sure. And uh, the types of sacrifice. So, you know, one of the types is a burnt offering. Typically, uh, the burnt offering, the grain offering, and the peace offering were considered voluntary. And uh, the burnt offering was for sin, complete surrender, devotion, and commitment. Often a bull ram, a goat, a dove, or pigeon were used. Right. So when, now when you say for sin and complete surrender and devotion, it's, it's like... And those things, it's it. It would be a, an offering for sin, 
and it could be an offering for you know devotion or commitment and stuff like that mm -hmm. kind of seemed to be kind of a general category somewhat yeah. yeah so you could or some of these others are very specific right so the grain offering um was once again considered a voluntary offering often uh, for thanksgiving of first fruits uh, flour, bread, grain made with olive oil and salt. It's always unleavened or incense. Right. And uh, if you haven't looked into unleavened stuff, um, it's important um, that it's always unleavened um, because Yah doesn't want any leaven leavening his lump. That's right. He wants it all pure. And another type is peace offering. Um, once again, considered voluntary. It's fellowship with God, thankfulness, an expression of a vow. And I, I meant to change this. It's not any animal, but, um, you know, clean animals that he mentions and uh, without blemish according to an individual's economic status. So it's not just the uh, higher ups that get this, this peace relationship with Yah, right? Right. It was for everybody. And another beautiful. Oh, we're not there yet, but so we got sin. Tell us about the sin. <laughs> so for the sin offering, um, right, this was mandatory. And kind of like we said, it was once you realize you've sinned, you bring this off, you, or you're to bring an offering to, quote, unquote, nope, and, cover it. Right, and nobody was going to do it for you. Right. Yeah, no one could do it for you. Um, and then as we, you know, look into uh, Hebrews and stuff like that, we find that actually this is a symbol it doesn't actually cover your sin it's a it's symbolically covering it pointing to messiah and actually all the all the sacrifices point to messiah in this case for the sin offering right you'd have a bull for the high priest or the whole congregation if it was a king you'd bring a goat a uh, common person would bring a female goat or a lamb poor person would bring a dove and then flower a flower offering for a very poor people so um yeah and then every one of these you know sacrifices would be would tie into what messiah they're pointing to messiah of course and then sin and guilt offerings were considered uh, mandatory so what about the guilt offering so this would be a ram or a lamb and it'd be made by a person who deprived another of his rights or had violated something holy. So then you would be guilty. Mm -hmm. And something that I find pretty fascinating about this is the concept that all economic levels, you know, he, he allowed for that. And, uh, you, you know, the rich typically are going to be like a lamb and the poor dove and the very poor grain offering. Right. So, and, and what were you saying earlier about um, this, this universal concept? Uh, just that it covers everybody. Uh, anyone can come to him. Was there a specific thing? No, no, I think that was it. Okay. So, um, but yeah. Yeah, just a, the door is open for anyone to, to come. And uh, it's not uh, dependent on your status. He's not a uh, respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't care if you're rich or poor or whatever. He wants you to do this. Yeah. And then uh, we get into a little bit of the salt covenant. And, you know, salt is more than a dry rub, Jake. In Texas, <laughs> it's a, a big deal to get your rub right. I've noticed. <laughs> and so... Uh, then I've that, extra salt in my rub, and do. it's, man, <laughs> extra it's salt extra in your tasty. rub. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, the whole idea of a salt covenant, you know, it's believed that back in the day, people carried a little pouch of salt. So where's your salt, Jake? Uh, <laughs> it's in my heart now, man. Yes. <laughs> and so they'd carry this little pa pouch of salt and... I'd have my salt and you'd have your salt and we'd come into an agreement together and we'd pour out our salts together, mix them all to get up and then separate them back. And the point was you could not undo this. 
So because it would be like impossible and who would sit there and pull out every grain of salt and go, oh, that one's yours, this one's mine. You know, it's impossible. They, they become one. Right. So... Um, it's you know, like blood brothers, only the clean, kind of the clean version. <laughs> yep, yep. And so it's this perpetual uh, covenant, and um, so, and it also just physically it slows down the work of the leaven, and but it represents a some breakable friendship. Right. So yeah, if you put that in your bread offering, anyone who's made bread, uh, you don't you don't let the salt get into the the yeasties. So, uh, yeah, that would kind of prevent the, mm -hmm. the leavening. Yeah, yeah, which is an interesting property for sure. So, um, so, so there were some sayings that went with this. Sometimes men ate together and they became friends and they might say, there's salt between us. I never said that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a pretty ancient expression. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and they might also say, he has eaten some of my salt which means he came into my house. He partook of my hospitality. Our friendship is cemented. And so probably I would imagine this was said in a, in a negatory way. Like, um, I mean, I guess it could also have been an like, expression of, this sounds yes, like a we're good buddies. Thing. Yeah, this you sounds were... like a good thing. You made it sound very, very scary. <laughs> I know, but, <laughs> but I'm thinking about, I can see some you guy... Just... That like some somebody's wronged him. You just don't want someone eating your salt. That's right. That's Wait right. a minute. Uh -huh. This is you're saying I owe you. If this is <laughs> this is a way of bringing up yeah I owe you. That's right. Right. And I here. can't get out of it now. Uh -huh. It's been brought up to the world. <laughs> but I, but I can think of it, you know, as a you know some old codger that. You know, this guy has wronged him and he's remembering, no, oh, that guy, he's come in my house and eating my salt. Where that, you know, and now he's wronged me. Yeah, I, can, I mean, I guess I could see that, you know, yeah. where oh, the eating of the salt meant, we're, hey, we're buddies. Yeah. And then you went and, and you know, mess over someone. And mm -hmm. it's like, hey, man, yeah, what, what happened? What's it with all the salt between us, man? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. But it is kind of interesting, you know, it's definitely not something people say. They don't say this in Texas or Pennsylvania. We or... could bring it back. Maybe we should. I'll we'll put it in Maybe the t-shirt idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> File it away. Don't steal our idea. It's worth Patent millions. <laughs> so just some basic things about salt. It, there, it's a preservative, obviously. It's essential for life. It uh, makes the food better. Um, flavor enhancer, but can you have too much salt on your food? Sure can. Yeah, I've done that. I Never. burnt my tongue with salt in my in muffins. Mm -hmm. I I did salt instead of sugar. Oh. I mixed. It, this was home ec class. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's the way to make an impression in home ec. Yeah, yeah. Like oops, <laughs> and everybody's like, mm, "These are good." <laughs> yeah, you needed a lot of water after that. <laughs> yeah. Which kind of goes to the point. It does. Right? We're going to talk about that. And uh, salt is also used to purify. Uh, and, um, so all of these things seem to be uh, very bl biblical in nature. Right. Not hard to see those connections. Jake, read this one. Salt doesn't change. Dissolve it, evaporate it, it all stays the same. So yeah, it's going to maintain its salinity well i used to do an experiment when i taught this and i would uh, take salt water and i would talk to the kids and we would find the mass of the salt and we find the mass of the water and then we put it together and i would ask them you know um if, if the salt was going to stay the same and after we boiled it and evaporated it and you know and they would sometimes go there would be less salt there'd be so more you made salt. a still in the classroom yes uh -huh. <laughs> And so, you know, it was it, it was always fascinating to to see uh, kids kind of waking up to the, you know, this principle for the first time. And they're always amazed that there was so much salt because it seemed to disappear yeah. in cl the clear water. But then it came back. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, it's almost like a, uh, a resurrection of sorts. Yes, kind of. So also aids in the fertility of soil. Now. Don't tell my old neighbor, but it also will kill oh, their absolutely. roses. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell your neighbor. Yeah. Uh, 
aids in fertility of soil. We are the soil, modern fertilizers, are salt. So there you have it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's one of the things uh, you know we use in abundance today. In in some places, we've over fertilized the soil, and and it's losing its fertility. Yeah, yeah, that's something I found interesting when I found salt in fertilizers was that uh, was kind of a mind bender because mm -hmm. I had always yeah thought salt kills stuff. Mm -hmm. So okay, salt has been very expensive. How expensive, Jake? So expensive. Well, it, yeah, it used to be one of the hottest commodities. I mean. It was everyone on the planet wanted salt. I'm pretty sure they traded they, gold yeah. for salt. Yeah. And people died because they like Napoleon and the famous people, not him, but it seems like soldiers in his army died one time because they didn't have salt. Well, it's, yeah, it's also yeah necessary for, for life. So uh, sodium needed to help neurons fire. So, so if you have a sodium imbalance, your brain may not work quite right. Maybe that's what's wrong with us. <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe so. So more about the salt covenant can be found in Leviticus 2.13. And every offering of your grain offering you shall season with salt. You shall not allow the salt of the covenant of your God to be lacking from your grain offering. With all your offerings you shall offer salt. So that's a pretty big deal. Every time. They probably needed uh, a stock of it. Yeah. And then here in uh, Numbers 18, kind of more salt covenant talk, all the heave offerings of the holy things, which the children of Israel offer to Yahweh, I have given to you and your sons and daughters with you as an ordinance forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before Yahweh with you and your descendants with you. How long does this happen? Forever. Forever. It's a long time. Yep. And then 2 Chronicles 13, 5 said, Should you not know that the Lord God of Israel gave the dominion over Israel to David forever, to him and his sons by covenant of salt? So does that... Uh, now, sometimes you'll hear forever doesn't really mean forever. It just means for that dispensation or for that time frame. So uh, does David have dominion forever? The line of David and Yeshua. That's right. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's forever. Yeah. Yeah. Do you believe so? Oh, I'm meant to meet this, Jake. Well, I mean, sometimes you got to hear how the salt <laughs> is made, man. I guess so. This is how the salt is made. So what does it mean to be the salt of the earth? Consuming salt makes you thirsty for the living waters, for one thing. Right. So, and then What's the living waters, Matt? The living water would be Yeshua when he says, I, uh, I I'm am the living water. water. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wasn't a trick question. Get, it wasn't a trick get, question. And you'll get thirsty if you drink this water, he said. Right. So the salt of the earth, a couple things. I mean, we kind of touched on what it means to be salty, what salt is and stuff. Um, it's, you know, be be a commodity, right? Be something that makes people thirsty for more. Be, be in something demand. That, be in demand. Be something that uh, is flavorful. You know, uh, be be someone to be sought after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So it means several things, but be salty. Be a salty person. Be salty. And uh, that's bringing us to the end of week twenty-four. Vayikra. Leviticus 1, 5 through 26. And so, Jake, any, any other final thoughts on this? Uh, no, just a lot of things there. And uh, you can, why don't you see how how Messiah falls into the different uh, uh, offerings and, and sacrifices? Mm -hmm. uh, some are pretty obvious. The sin offering is pretty obvious. Uh, but look into that and see kind of how it uh, applies a, to each one of those. And I think we're going to do a, a podcast eventually where we kind of go into that in a little mm -hmm. bit more detail. Yeah, we we'll about that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Even like uh, the wave offering, you know, the, the grain offering. Um, and, he, you know, a lot of people say he was the first fruits offering uh, right. when he rose. 
again. And uh, so there's a lot of interesting things to look at for sure there. Yeah. So, but as always, we appreciate you stopping by to look, uh, to, to, to listen. And we appreciate um, you giving us a like. We appreciate if you want to just leave us uh, like a shofar emoji. So right. um, you can you can rate our show five shofars if you would like. <laughs> Ooh, five would shofars. Be, that would be fine. Five out of five, preferably. Yep. So, but uh, just anything like that helps us uh, get the word out. Uh, you know, once again, we, we we're not making money off of this, um, but we enjoy doing it, and it's kind of a. Um, you get the benefit of uh, of our our trying to keep track of what we're studying. That's right. That's basically what this is. Is just our public a uh, public version of our biblical study that we do. So yeah. So, so put comments too. Comments yeah. in the comments so or questions. Can, yeah. So we can kind of see how this is you know affecting people. See if anyone's getting anything out of it. So yep. And, um, but, uh, if you're just checking us out for the first time, Google Sabbath lounge, you'll find a lot of content out there in different platforms, different topics and subjects. And we, uh, we do appreciate you stopping by and listening. And this is Matt and Jake signing off.